In this video, we'll talk about finding roots of complex numbers and solving equations involving complex numbers. The way I want to start this off is by talking about solving the equation z to the n equals w for some fixed complex number w. So if I know w is of the form r e to the i theta, I want to find the complex numbers that satisfy z to the n equals w. So how can we do this? Well, let's start by saying we know what z has to look like in polar form and see what that tells us. So if z, our answer is going to be s times e to the i phi for another complex number of that form, well, we know what z to the n is. We know that z to the n is going to be s to the n times e to the i n phi. That's how powers of complex numbers work in polar form. If I want this to equal w, which is r e to the i phi, this tells me a nice easy way to set this up. This means for these two things to be equal, I would need to have s to the n equals r, an equation of real numbers we know how to solve, and n phi equals theta to match up the angles. This gives you a pretty straightforward way. These are both positive real numbers over here. So I can take an nth root, and over here I can just divide both sides by n. So I must have that s is r to the 1 over n, or the nth root of r. And I must have that phi is theta over n. So what do I get? I get a solution here of the form z equals r to the 1 over n e to the i theta over n, which will satisfy z to the n equals w, which was r e to the i theta. So that's a good start. However, I had an nth degree polynomial here, right? It was z to the n equals w, but I only found one solution. Are there other solutions that I can get to? Are there other complex numbers that make this work? And the answer here is yes, there are. There are actually n complex numbers to make this work. And the idea here is the following. I have that w is r e to the i theta, or it's at the point r theta in polar coordinates. A main thing to be talked about in polar coordinates is how polar coordinates are not unique. The point r theta is the same point as r theta plus two pi, or the same as theta plus four pi, or the same as r theta plus two k pi for any integer k. Right, this just means how many times do I wrap around the origin or on the circle before I get to the angle I care about. But all of these, correspond to the same complex number because of the same point in polar coordinates. So what does that mean? Well, it means if I started with w is r e to the i theta plus 2 pi, which is the same number, and then I go to solve for my z's that solve z to the n equals w, how do we get to z here? Well, we got to z by taking the nth root of the modulus, which is still the same as it was before, 1 over n, no big deal. But then I divided the angle by n. Well, in this case, this is gonna mean e to the i theta over n plus two pi over n, which is not the same complex number as just theta over n, because it's not a difference of multiple two pi anymore. It's two pi over n, which has shifted it, but not a full way around the circle. This is a different complex number than the first z I had, r to the one over n, e to the i theta over n. I've now found a second root here to work this out. I can keep plugging in different adjustments up here, multiples of two pi, until I get to two n, in which case I'll have an added again two pi here and it'll cancel itself out. So for instance, I can do the same thing with a four and I would get z equals r to the one over n, e to the i theta over n plus four pi over n. If n is two here, well then in that case, 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi. It's actually the same complex number that I started from here. But if n is bigger than 2, this is another different solution. And so I'll get a whole bunch of different answers this way. I will actually get n different answers this way. And that's why it works out so nicely. We have an nth degree equation and n solutions to it. So the general formulas for the complex number w is r e to the i theta and a positive number n, the solutions to the equation z to the n equals w are the ones we were talking about before. Right, we're going to rewrite w basically as r e to the i theta plus two pi k, take k from zero up to n minus one, and that will give us our n solutions we want. So I will get 
z0, I'll call it z0 because it's going to be k equals 0, as r to the 1 over n e to the i theta over n. I'll get z1, which is r to the 1 over n e to the i theta over n plus 2 pi over n. I'll get z2, which is r to the 1 over n e to the i theta over n plus 4 pi over n all the way up to z n minus 1, which is r to the 1 over n, e to the i theta over n plus 2 pi times n minus 1 over n. If I go one more, I'll get a 2 pi left over up on top, and that'll go back to z0. If you want to write this out more concisely, you could write this as my solutions z k are r to the 1 over n, the modulus there is always the same, times e to the i theta plus 2 pi k over n. And those are the nth roots of the complex number w. Now it's important to realize here, there are always n roots. They may not all be real, but there are always n of them. As an example, let's find the polar coordinates of the three complex roots of z cubed equals 1 plus i. So my w here is 1 plus i, and I have n equals 3. To do this, I first need to convert w into polar coordinates. So, so r should be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 2. And theta should be the inverse tangent of 1 over 1, which is pi over 4. So my w is root 2 e to the i pi over 4. And I want to find the three different solutions that I get to z cubed equaling this w. So since this here is 2 to the 1 half, my modulus for the z's will always be 2 to the 1 6. It's always the cube root of that modulus. So we'll get z1, which is 2 to the 1 6 times e to the i, divide the angle by 3, pi over 12. z2 is going to be 2 to the 1 6 e to the i. Now it's pi over 4 plus 2 pi divided by 3. I shift by a 2 pi on top. It gives me a pi over 12 plus a 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is 8 pi over 12. So I get 2 to the 1 6th e to the i 9 pi over 12. And then z3 is going to be 2 to the 1 6th e to the i pi over 4 plus 4 pi over 3, which is 2 to the 1 6th e to the i 17 pi over 12. And that's all three solutions. If I tried to find a fourth, I'd end up adding 6 pi over 3, which would add 24 pi, getting me to 25 pi over 12. But that's the exact same as pi over 12 because the angle rotates by 2 pi. So these are my three solutions that I would get for the cube roots of the complex number 1 plus i. You could write these out in rectangle form if you wanted, but since they're not special angles, it's going to be harder to do that. So that's the idea of roots of complex numbers. The idea is a root of a complex number is not unique anymore. There's always n options for the nth root of a complex number. It's important to keep that in mind when you're trying to solve these sorts of problems. And when you're trying to solve equations, that means you'll always be able to find n roots to a given equation like this because they always exist. Even if they may all be complex numbers, they're all still out there.